Vibrations podcast, part 29, Jill Marshall. Hi, I'm Gary Brightman, and this is my bi-weekly podcast called Vibrations. Established in 2018, Vibe is a book and music shop situated in Moi Wo, on Lantau Island, in Hong Kong. So, what's been happening at the shop over the past couple of weeks? On Saturday the 3rd of July, we had our second Tiny Desk gig of the year, thanks to Ryan McManamy and Will James. They gave a storming one-hour set of their own brand of alt-rock and indie covers. It was broadcast live on Facebook and is now available on our YouTube channel, Live at Vibe HK. Subscribers are very welcome. If you're interested in performing a Tiny Desk gig at Vibe one Saturday, then please contact me on the usual channels or come and see me at Vibe on a Tuesday, Friday or Saturday. As I mentioned in my last podcast, Ginger and Tiger, two of the very famous Hong Kong canto pop band Mirror, filmed at the shop recently and it was aired on VIEW TV two weeks ago. Since that time, we've welcomed 10 to 15 Mirror fans to the shop every single day to have their photos taken with the signed limited edition CD box set which I was given by the band of 12 Popsters you can watch Mirror on their YouTube channel of the same name, along with the other 162,000 subscribers, 6,000 of which have now been in contact with us at Vibe via Facebook. The Vibe version 2.0 reboot is ongoing with new stock appearing all the time and a cleaner, more organised shop. Many thanks to Eslin Terragina of Tales Animal Rescue fame. We still have one more trick up our sleeve, which will be a UK-themed chill-out room. More on that in future podcasts. The England football team made their first appearance in a final since 1966, which I can barely remember. I'd gotten used to waking up at 3am to watch all our qualifying games. However, the last kick of the game saw England as runners-up to Italy in the Euro 2020 final. Hugely disappointing, but next year is the World Cup and I'm an eternal optimist. So, more hurt to come then. And so to this week's interview, the third of our three Scotland Connected interviews. Jill Marshall is the owner of Paws Pilates Studio and Healing Centre in Moy Wo, where she is a long-term resident. She is herself a Pilates instructor and has been sharing this work with people for over 20 years. She is also a yoga and Nia teacher. Nia is spelt N-I-A and is another form of movement training which is fun and uplifting for people. She is a student of hypnotherapy and is a Reiki master and practices other healing modalities such as the body talk technique. These are available at her studio along with many other classes with other local professionals, she teams up to bring healthy living to the Lantau community and to Hong Kong residents through her popular Healthy Day Retreats. She set up the studio and later Pause Cafe. Pause is both a statement and a place for people to slow down to avoid the burnout effects of stress. She was raised in Hong Kong by her Scottish parents but was born in London where she lived for the first seven years. She loves learning new skills and is fascinated by the human mind and body complex. She thinks being a mum is a privilege and loves her daughter Chloe, who she raised on Lantau. Her area of expertise is an improving posture for optimal physical function and teaching about core activation to all populations to relieve or prevent joint pain. In particular, back pain using the techniques she has studied and the Pilates equipment at her studio. She specialises in working with women during and after pregnancy and during menopause. Welcome to Vibe, Jill. Thanks, Gary. Great to be here. And as we do, we'll go straight into the 10 questions. OK. So the first question is, favourite book or author? Uh, I'm going to go with Rohinton Mystery, um, A Fine Balance favourite musical artist? I'm torn between Madonna and Pink Floyd um, but I'm going to go with Pink Floyd. And do you have a preferred drink? Um, I do. My favourite drink in the whole wide world is a really good chai tea. Any particular yeah. sort of brand or that you use or, well, or that you sell in pores maybe? I don't know. No, we're working on how to make a good chai in bulk. Okay. So yeah. my favourite chai in the world is made by my yoga teacher. Okay. And... Um, and I guess in India you get the real deal. Right? Yeah. 
but you know it's getting the balance of all the spices that are in there right yeah and the quantity of the milk and the tea but yeah a good chai is not to be missed unbeatable good mm, yeah all right nice choice do you have a life motto um i think my life motto is to trust myself and follow my heart and i think that's exactly what you're doing with pause isn't it that's it what is. it seems to be yeah it is definitely following my passion good do you have a favorite hong kong walk um i love the walk from tong chung to tayo that's my favorite oh yeah yeah that's coast, a nice one beautiful beaches yeah Okay, uh, do you have a favourite Hong Kong restaurant? I don't actually have a favourite Hong Kong restaurant. Too many to choose from. I used to love Lucy's and Stanley. I wonder if that's still there. Lucy's and Stanley was was wonderful and my whole family loved it, so we'd always go there for birthdays. Faced with a python while walking up to the peak, mm-hmm. what would you do? Snakes is my biggest phobia, as is many is for many people. At that. Yeah, mine too. Um, yeah. I can't imagine. I think I would freeze... But yeah. the truth is I'd probably just run away as fast as I can. Yeah, yeah. What was the best advice you were ever given? To never give up um, because anything mm. is possible. But another one that someone said to me is, see life as art. And I love that. Sometimes I just look around as if I'm in a gallery. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very interesting one, actually. Finish this sentence. I live in Hong Kong because... I live in Hong Kong because I love it. It's amazing. And um, that's my choice to stay here. But originally I came to Hong Kong because my family moved here. Right. So it wasn't originally my choice, but of course now it is. And it's just, you know, it's a vibrant city. It's all my history and memories from childhood are here. And uh, yeah, I just love it. Yeah. You see it as home. I do. What's your favorite area of Hong Kong? At one point, I was a freelance English teacher, and I went to these schools in all different areas of Hong Kong that yeah. I hadn't actually necessarily been to before um, growing up here. Um, I don't know. I love some of the parts of Kowloon, Kowloon City. Um, absolute yeah. favourite, though, still has to be Moi Wo. <laughs> what brought you to Hong Kong in the first place, and, and when was that? In 1980. My parents packed up from London, and yeah. my dad got a job with the government um, here in the legal department. Okay. Um, so myself, my sister, and my younger brother all came over with my parents and um, started off living for about six months in the Hong Kong Hotel at the time in Chen Sa Choi. And we moved over to Old Pete Road, raised in the mid levels, and um, you know, very different than our. Ha- my memories of childhood is the house in London, and then from age seven, it was you know living in a tower block. Whereabouts did you live in London, first of all? Um, Near Kentish Town, Tufnell Park. The smells, the heat. Did it hit you? Did you realise the difference? Um, I think I did realise the difference, yeah. I think um, we started at primary school eventually on the peak. And so our trip would take us on the Star Ferry, followed by the peak tram. Oh, sounds like By a short walk. Yeah, so, you know, that's the completely different world. You know, I think in London we usually walked... You know, we had the local school, we yes. just walked to school. So, yeah, getting all these different forms of transport. And, you know, I always remember the, the um, for some reason, we always took the lower deck of the Star Ferry. It's got very yeah. distinct sounds and smells. Yes, it's got that rumbling of, yeah. the, of the thing and a very sort of oily, oily smell, yeah. hasn't it? How cool to go to school on the Star Ferry. <laughs> and the peak tram. <laughs> and the peak tram, for goodness sake. As and a then, form of transport. Yeah. You mentioned your parents were Scottish. Yeah. Um, so whereabouts in Scotland were they from? They're from Glasgow, but they'd already lived in London for about eight years before I was born. So yeah. they, uh, so we would only go to Scotland to see my grandparents, and there was only one yeah. set of grandparents. So we would always go to Ayrshire, to the coast, to my granny's house. Nice. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we lived in London. Yeah. And um, so neither of them actually have very strong Scottish accent. Unless they're in Scotland, when it yes. all comes flooding back. All right, so you find yourself in Hong Kong, mm. seven years old, you go to school, uh, you work through the school system, no doubt, and you pop out around, what, 18, 20 years old. What do you do then? Uh, so my first sort of experiences was of waitressing in Lang Kui Fong and one Chai and TST. Oh, really? Yeah, so after school, I didn't go straight away to um, UK for education, but I stayed in Hong Kong and um, okay. worked first yes. in F&B. I love F&B. I love food. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that was great. Yes. And then yeah. I was aware that all my friends were slightly, all my friends from school who had gone away when they came back were slightly 
I don't know, evolved in a different way yes. from their experiences. Yeah. So eventually I went to UK and I Okay. Um, yeah. I lived a little bit in Bristol and then in Leeds um, and that was also interesting going back to UK feeling a bit of a stranger in my original home yeah and you know learning more about it and also living in the south and then living in the north and yeah getting that's stark enough as it is isn't it yeah. yeah south of England versus north but to plonk in the middle of that your Hong Kong life so what age were you when you went back to the UK uh, so I must have been 20 yeah, 20 when I went back, and yeah. then I came back here um, when I was pregnant with my daughter Chloe, oh, who's right. also a local resident. Yes. So was she born here she then? She was born here just. I was pregnant in UK and I came here to have her. Brilliant. Mostly because I wanted my parents near me. Ah, so nice. I came home. What happened next? Uh, so then I became a mum, and um, the gift that is, um, I eventually... Um, I was very lucky because I lived at my parents' house when I had Chloe, so we were surrounded by constant resources, love, uh, support, basically. Yeah. So that was very lucky, and we stayed living at home for some time, first three years of her life, uh, maybe four years of her life was at home. Yeah. And then, um, but within that time, I started to work. I worked as a um, publisher, in uh, as an editor in the English language material at Oxford University Press. Okay. So I started off doing that. I'd actually approached them because I wanted to work in more in the art and design team, but I didn't have Chinese language, unfortunately, as a um, requirement. Yeah. So they put they asked me if I wanted to work in editing. And then it wasn't too long before the uh, my boss was like, if you do the English language training and become an English language teacher, you can get a promotion. So yeah. I was like, mm, sure. However, after I did that training, I was like, whoa, I don't need to work in an office. I can go and teach. So then yes. I moved into teaching. Once yeah. I'd learned how to teach, it was one of the most valuable lessons ever, you know, learning yes. how people learn and that interaction. I mean, it was so challenging for me at the time. And I was so shy and underconfident at that stage in my life that I just didn't even know how I would possibly pass this, you know, being yeah. out at the front of the classroom, leading a classroom. I didn't have it in my life that I was a leader. So... You know, it was a big challenge. Yes. However, picking up those skills and then, you know, moving into teaching uh, really gave me a lot of my foundations. And then after I'd been doing that for a few years, teaching English, I, um, I'd really honed the teaching skill, but I did realize that my passion wasn't teaching English. Right. Um, so then I looked for, uh, I was in a, I was working in an English language center and I was, I knew though that my days were numbered, that I wanted to look for something else. And it was then that my mum was like, hey, why don't you come to my Pilates class? Uh, Pilates, what is that? Yeah. And so, you know, my mum was 60 at the time, and I did notice that she looked distinctly, I don't know, trimmer, fitter, better. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she took me to her Pilates class, and I... Uh, where was her Pilates class? Where? Where, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> she was a member of the golf club, so she was yes. going off twice a week yeah. to her Pilates class. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. She invited me and then, you know, and it was the first time I'd done a form of exercise where I was like completely engaged the whole time. I wasn't bored. I enjoyed it. I mean, prior to that, I must say I do like swimming and I did like yeah. yoga that I'd also done previously with my mum, but not enough to hook me. But this yes. was like love at first sight. Right. OK. So that's that, that set you off on the on the path that you're on now really mm, it did. W when was that are we talking about sort of mm. 1990s late 90s yep. by this time yes exactly yeah i did my pilates teacher training soon after that first class there happened to be a training in hong kong that i took and yeah. um, that was in i think that was completed in 2000 so today you're a fully trained pilates and yoga teacher yeah that's right then what are your first moves then into setting up and setting up a business I guess yeah so that was another big step um, so the yoga came later but at this point I was uh, you know qualified in teaching English and Pilates and um, I also had a permanent ID card so that meant I didn't have yes, to gold yes gold, yeah. gold and by this point my confidence has grown as a teacher um, yes and I've just switched field um, I'm not confident yet particularly necessarily in human movement and posture but I have an appetite and I'm passionate yes. so off I go and I you know uh, start doing one-to-ones at people's homes luckily got a yeah. small article in the SCMP which I'm um, fortunate to have that and I yes. got clients yeah. I was just doing home visits so low overheads but you know I started to 
look at it from a business perspective and then eventually I um, got some premises in Central and I set up yeah. a studio because the Pilates I was trained in uses some equipment, Pilates equipment. A man called Joseph Pilates set up, um, created the system himself right. for the human body, for posture, based on his own illness really. He wasn't okay. well so he took it upon himself to um, yeah. look for ways to self-heal and in the process helped others and then he developed some equipment which he worked out using springs to create resistance right rather than okay. weight yeah. so i was doing that in central and then i was living in lantau yeah i don't know at what point it became a, a dream to have a studio on lantau but i remember wanting it for a while before it happened and then you know like sometimes like like often in life it happens all suddenly spontaneously you know yeah i walked past the um antique shop that i'd walked past a million other times saw it was empty phoned my friend's mom who i know lives a uh, local chinese lady that lives here for many years and and also has had properties herself yeah. she's like yeah i know the owner it's just on the market you know it just oh, happened wow. very quickly and i couldn't fathom doing this on my own but I don't know if you remember, there was a wonderful yoga teacher here called Dougal Meacham. I he don't. left a while ago, but yeah. anyway, we joined forces. At that time, yeah. I was Pilates, not yet yoga. Okay. But I was yoga in training, and he was an amazing yoga teacher. Yeah. And so we joined forces, and oh, wow. you know, we pretty much looked at the premises and took it straight away. Which is where you are now, yes, is it? Yes. On the corner by the resort? Yeah, and yeah. you know, when we first went in, I mean, it was okay. almost heartbreaking to tear it out to put in a studio because it had all the walls with the little boxes oh, with yes. a little ring to oh open. if I'd been open then I would have shipped all <laughs> yeah, that down I here know, we I could know. Have, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I have to let go the past is in the past yeah but absolutely I'm like gosh yeah. if I could have preserved yeah. it yeah no needs must <laughs> I, I understand yeah. okay so that would have been what around I'm 2010 thinking, now yes, 2011 yes, I think exactly. I remember you opening there yeah. I think it's 2011, um, yeah. 2011, from that point, Paul's Cafe pops up. Yep, again, <laughs> vision I had long before it actually came yes. into existence. Yeah, you know when I said earlier I waitressed, I actually, yes. my first job was waitressing in an Indian restaurant, and, you know, I have this strong um, connection with India, like you said about Hong Kong yes. before when we were yes. there. Uh, that sometimes you just have this like invisible thread to a place. It just and, clicks, yeah. yeah. So, I wait, uh, so I went to India, fell in love with India, came back to Hong Kong, got a job in an Indian restaurant, and then no surprise later that I would love yoga and Indian philosophy. Yeah. yeah. But um, so, you know, yeah, I, always, I lo just love food. That comes from my family as well. We're all yes. foodies. So, yeah. And then I love health food and being healthy. Right. I've I've been very unhealthy and I've been okay. very overweight in my life in right. the past. So I've had this experience of using food and exercise to moderate to uh, balance, balance yeah. Yeah, my well being, you know. Yeah. And I've I know what it's like to be very unhealthy and, and also mentally unhealthy and Yeah, know, because it goes had, hand in hand, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and you know, I've I've mm. myself had bouts of depression in my life. So, you know, um, yeah. using food and food as medicine and movement as medicine is really you know actually when you ask yeah. me my life motto or whatever should yes. be that yeah. food, food as medicine movement as medicine so anyway it was a dream to have a place yes. and I know I, I know that in Lantau at that time there wasn't anything like it as well no so from a business perspective not. it you know it could work in that way but yeah but you know, I had tried to do something small in the studio, within the studio, but it wasn't, I knew there were licensing rules and stuff and it wasn't really yeah. going to be uh, my real vision. So, you know, and I just loved the building. Um, yeah. So I don't know for listeners if they would know, but it's a beautiful old building. Oh yeah, and it's yeah. It's really her heritage and... Um, well, I remember when, when it was sort of a, it, at one stage it was boarded up for many years uh, they're like old hutongs in a way mm, aren't yes. they with that sort of loft space cock loft in them nice tall and it seemed forever that they were derelict and then all of a sudden they seemed to gut them and do the right thing i yeah. felt yeah. they whitewashed them and they were just such a fabulous little parade of yeah. of shops in like a little, lovely quiet leafy part of moiwo opposite the playground yeah. it's, it's a beautiful right spot near the beach and the banyan tree yeah and the so banyan tree yeah. yes how old is that yeah. 150 years maybe yeah let's find out it's just beautiful yeah so you at that location is is brilliant and i seems to me I talk to a lot of people come into the shop here we talk about Paws Cafe and everybody has praise for it yes it has oh, a very really? good reputation oh. yeah oh, that makes me so happy yeah it really does I mean people say it's such a nice relaxing space 
the food and drink is good and um you know they enjoy it and i've been there and i enjoy it as well it's um well, thank yeah. you. It's a real labour of love, and it's a family business as well. So, um, yeah, you know, I knew I, I had the vision. I didn't have the vision of how it would happen. You know, I knew I wanted to have something where you could relax, peace of mind, peaceful space with good food, healthy, yes. um, and you know, fresh ingredients. I knew that, but I just didn't know how to get that. Yeah, <laughs> to yeah. Do it. I had no yeah. idea, no idea how I was going to do this. Yeah. And then, in the end, at at some point along the journey, my brother and my daughter. And her boyfriend got involved. Ah, and really, it's okay. my daughter who, and and the team. It's the whole team. The you know the yeah. chef and the staff. The whole. It's it's lovely. It's a family atmosphere. I mean, yes, blood relatives and and our friendly family. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say we have Paul's studio. Well, Paul's Pilates studio with yoga. We also have a lot of dance yeah. movement. So we have sort of a dance floor. And uh, also healing center, I would say, because we have uh, yes. guest practitioners. Where myself, I'm actually a Reiki practitioner as well, but um, more, I would say, guest practitioners in the healing realm, like craniosacral and the Ayurvedic doctor. For now, we're using the multi-purpose space of the studio um, yeah. by the river on the other side, where you know we can have it as a fully equipped Pilates studio. We can have groups or small um, small groups or one to one. Yeah. Um, and then the way I have it, um, the way the number of pieces of equipment I have, the way I can pack it away is quite um, impressive. So yes. that there's still a, enough for a small group of dancers or um, yoga class, yoga mats, you know, yoga yeah. or um, meditation. Do you have a, a format that you, let, let's take a sort of typical week at, at pause. We, we have something every morning right. and a few weeknights and then weekends um, yeah. we have activities. We've started doing day retreats on the weekends, mostly on Saturdays, actually to help people from the city have the opportunity to come to Lantau and have a, well, you know, the name pause is, is just perfect. I mean, yeah, you know, so they can come over and they don't have to think, they'll have a whole day of activities at the studio, a variety between ah, very and good. meditation, yeah. And then we go to the cafe, have lunch, and then they come ah. back to the studio and finish off with maybe a guided hypnotherapy right. meditation. So anyway, they have this full pack day of healing yeah, at the studio. Nice. And that's the a Saturday? Yeah, or? not every Saturday right yeah. now. We're just testing it out. So it'll be monthly, maybe twice a month, and then maybe eventually it'll be every weekend. Yeah. So it would yeah. be like, you know, so people could book as they would do a spa day you yes. know as they do in the hotels over in tst and hong kong side yeah. they could have an island a lantau island yeah spa day equivalent with pause yeah it's going it's going well the feedback's great you know you don't have to think about anything and we have such great practitioners how would you structure or how do you structure those days how do you start first thing and how do you go through the day how long mm. is a day uh, so we've experimented with a few and the first one we had two activities lunch and then two activities and we make the activities um, fit around that so we'd start off with like a healing yoga get grounded arrive in the session a little bit of chat get to know each other and then we'd have a more of a moving session maybe a dance with breathing okay something like that yeah. something a bit unusual as well right um, and then we'll break for lunch and um, we found that lunch wasn't long enough. <laughs> I gave 90 <laughs> minutes but it wasn't enough. We needed more because everyone enjoyed chatting yes. and getting to know each other. Yeah, then, it's all part of it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and then there's a new connection and you know, yeah. you've know you already chilled out enough and you have really in the day by then. So then yeah. in the afternoon we come back and we'd have two more activities um, and um, one more active, not as active as before lunch as we digest yes and then finish with a meditation a guided hypno meditation very powerful okay um, and then and then the second one we did we had five activities so we added on something else yeah um, you know maybe even as simple as like sitting in a circle weaving together like ah. a moving meditation dancing right. um, so dancing would be a bit more active yes. learning about the breath using the breath to calm the nervous system yoga there's so many styles of yoga so you know on a day retreat it may be a very relaxing one or maybe yet yeah a little bit more vigorous you know i work a lot actually a lot with people with joint pain mostly backs but also could be knees or uh, hips wherever mm. but um that's in the pilates world that's you know in that realm of my work i do work with a lot of physical ailments 
Okay, and you you mentioned something there, hypnotherapy. Mm. What does that involve? How long does that take? Um, <laughs> so, I've personally actually I love hypnotherapy. I've had hypnotherapy sessions for myself to yeah. quit smoking and also around my phobia of snakes. Um, well, that's two I need straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down. Yes. Yeah, I work with a few hypnotherapists actually, and I'm in training myself. Um, because I love it. I think it's yeah. amazing. All it involves for you is to lie down and, um, well, usually lie down uh, or sit in a comfy chair and yes. let your body relax. And that's actually all you have to do. Um, okay. It definitely helps if you believe that your subconscious is powerful and can be spoken to. Yes, I think okay. It helps all right. um, with the result if you have less resistance. Um, often, people who like to be in control of everything find it a little harder how to let go yeah of it, it definitely still yeah. would work but you may need more sessions um i believe but not necessarily uh do I, you give these sessions I, or? I don't i'm training no. i've yeah. just started my training because yeah. i i think it's uh something i'm, t I'm actually training because i'm just really interested in it i yeah. don't know if i would ever become a hypnotherapist as a practitioner or not but i work with um three hypnotherapists yeah and um they all have a different style um, but they all get the great results. It's looking at the root, right? It's going to the root of the problem. Yeah. And um, even with the body work I do teaching Pilates, you know, it's like, it's a, like looking for a needle in a haystack. What caused that sore knee or whatever? Um, yeah. You know, we don't always know the root, but using hypnotherapy, I think you can often get to the root cause of the problem very easily, and it doesn't take any effort from the patient. It strikes me that there's probably a whole list of things that we can book pause for yeah and you will either put us in touch with the right people to use on your premises or you directly yourself mm -hmm. provide those services so pause is a space or a, a place where people can access these various modalities so in that sense i feel like i'm almost a uh, you know, pause is almost like a health solutions yeah and that i'm almost like an agent for my practitioners yeah in some in some sense yeah yes so you can go to the website and book from our menu of options right um, okay I'm, you know I'm just so lucky to be able to collaborate with those people it is through pause we have got it set up as a business so that it's through pause website that you can access these practices and practitioners what's the but pause website it's um, pause.hk can't be that hard can it <laughs> you've got vibe hk and you've got pause.hk yeah gotcha I think you're also on Facebook as well similar yeah. gig Yep, we are we're yep. on Facebook. Um, to to book um, classes and sessions, um, people head to the website for classes, and yeah. also um, to make a booking, they can email from the website. There'll be a form they can book through that. Or right. Often people just contact us by phone. Yeah. And the phone number's on the website. Okay, mm. brilliant. And I guess they can just go to the cafe, have a cup of coffee, decide to change their life or cure a problem, and ask your daughter uh, uh, yeah. or brother put me in touch with uh with pause yeah that's a nice synergy that you know was always part of my vision was that the um that they'd support each other naturally that people yes. who go to that cafe would also be interested in what's over the other side of the river and vice versa and that's just beautiful to see that actually happening i have had people come to classes and they're like yeah i was having a coffee saw the yeah. little advert in the menu for the yoga class just one more thing because you asked me you said is there mainly these two things um you know the studio and the cafe and you know when I think about it it's like yeah there's the studio and the the healing center wellness part working with other people and the cafe and um, my own practice of course of teaching but also I just want to mention that we yeah. set up a charity as well okay and so when I think of it I think of pause in three parts one is the studio and all that goes there the cafe and then we set up a pause cause where we right. um, do some fundraising and use the funds um, hundred percent of the funding goes to um, providing studio practices like yoga and um, education around health and wellness for underprivileged populations um, oh. that's also just all on the website but it's something okay that's that nice. we started and um, you know the local community so we would provide yoga for uh, love 21 foundation the Hong Kong Society for the protection of children um, Hong Kong migrant workers um, uh, Maggie Center which works with cancer you okay. know, and all the people that are already set up we just yeah. provide services for them okay nice and we pay the teacher out of our funding very good very noble I think that's a fantastic thing and that's all about the community thing that we try and 
do here in Moira, I think. It just remains for me to say, Jill, thank you very much for coming. Oh, Gary, thank you so much for inviting me. I love it here in your bookshop. It's just, you know, it's just so serene. It's been a perfect pause for myself today to be with you. You can listen to all our Vibrations podcasts published on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Amazon Music, TuneIn and Alexa, Stitcher, Listen Notes, Player FM, SoundCloud and a few others. Or you can watch on our YouTube channel under Live at Vibe HK. Or follow the links from my website at vibehk.com. Our opening and closing music is from my good mate in Tong Fook on Lantau Island, Pete Millwood. It's called Green Island Dub by Celestial and is on the Retrospect vinyl album. On sale at Vibe! Finally, a reminder that Vibe is open seven days a week, every day of the year, from 12 noon until approximately 6.30pm. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for listening to the 29th Vibe Book and Music Shop podcast called Vibrations. I'm Gary Brightman. You get my vibe? Can you imagine what this old island must have looked like to those Dutch sailors when they first saw it? Fresh green. Like a dream of a new world. They must have held their breath. Afraid it would disappear before they could touch it.